Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at Noon. Nationwide shipping delays of the flu vaccine this season is having a ripple effect in the bluegrass. Prepare to loosen your belts. Lexington's Cheesecake Factory is now open. And we're looking outside right now with the cloudy skies. We have a few light showers out ahead of this, but your main line still back in western Kentucky. And we'll see that approach us in the next couple of hours. I'll show you that forecast coming up. WKYT News at Noon starts right now. Good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith in for Barbara Bailey. If you haven't received that flu shot yet, you may have to wait a little longer to get one. Some delays, some key shipments of the vaccine have been delayed, forcing some health care providers nationwide to put off vaccinations. WKYT's Mike Linden tells us how it is affecting health departments here in Kentucky. And that's our top story at noon. Mike. National manufacturers of the flu vaccine are experiencing delays in production this season, and that means for supply throughout Kentucky that while there is no shortage, there is certainly a delay in shipment. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the overall vaccine supply is behind by about 10 million doses this time of year. Last week, we told you about the Franklin County Health Department experiencing shipping delays of the vaccine, but their drive through flu event on Thursday will go off as planned. While manufacturers say they plan to have most doses available by the end of the month, shipments will now continue into November. There might be a little bit of a, a delay, but um, keep checking and we understand the vaccine's on its way. Health officials in Fayette County tell me that while there isn't a shortage of the flu vaccine, they are experiencing a delay along with the rest of the country in getting their supply when they had anticipated. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. Mike, thank you. Now, we've posted more information about the Franklin County drive through flu shot event. That's on WKYT.com right now. Well, the brief of the Indian summer almost over, so soak up those <laughs> warm temperatures while you can. Cool air coming back to the bluegrass for the rest of the week, along with some rain, actually. WKYT meteorologist Micah Harris has more. Yeah, we're looking outside, and what we see is this big mass of rain that's going to be making its way toward us here in the next several hours. It's going to be a pretty soggy afternoon is what it looks like, but you can see the motion of that. I put the arrows up there just to show you that, and I'll put this into motion, and look how, I mean, it's a very long extended system. We'll start to get some of these thunderstorms ramping up as we make our way into the next couple of hours, and then they'll push on through as we go into the evening and into the night. So it's really that afternoon and off into early evening that we're going to be seeing a lot of this. 70s, even some 60s out and about. And once that rain moves in, it'll kind of cool some things on off. But uh, today's forecast right there in the 70s, showers and storms. Now, some of these storms, I th look, I think it's virtually um, zero chance of seeing any severe weather, widespread severe weather. But you can't rule out a couple of isolated severe cells. And I'll really jot that down and show you more details on that coming up. All right, thanks so much, Micah. The only survivor of a quadruple shooting in western Kentucky is speaking out about the brutal killing of his family. Ryan Champion lost his father, mother, and sister in Sunday's deadly shooting in Trigg County. He says Vito Reservato tied him up along with his sister Emily. Champion says his parents, Lindsay and Joy, came home during the attack. He says he was able to free himself and overpower Reservato before escaping. He acted erratically the entire time. He was keeping, you know, a real good eye on me, and it, my concern was just for her the whole time. Champion says his family had only recently met the suspect. Police say after the attack, he turned the gun on himself. Autopsies and funeral arrangements are still pending for the victims. An attempted robbery in southern Kentucky from April of 2013 has been solved with the help of DNA evidence. A grand jury has indicted 35-year-old Sean Stalen. Detectives say he pulled a gun on a clerk at the Wildcat Tobacco near London. He then ran off before he got the money, dropping his baseball cap along the way. Well, now, 18 months later, the KSP Crime Lab was able to link Stalen to the DNA in that hat. He is currently serving a 15-year prison sentence for another robbery. We're tracking a developing story out of Harrison County this midday, where search crews are looking for a missing man. Clinton O'Brien was last seen six days ago. Authorities tell us his car was found last night at the Robinson Dam on the Licking River. Crews are searching the banks and dragging the water right now. So far, they have found nothing. There is no word yet on what led up to his disappearance. 
Well, four UK football players charged in a gun scare on campus will make their first appearance in court this afternoon. Freshmen Stanley Williams, Tymere DuBose, Dorian Baker, and Drew Baker were all cited for misdemeanor disorderly conduct. According to court documents, the four were playing a game of manhunt near the Kerwin Blanding dorm complex last month. Police say shots were fired from a BB and pellet gun, sparking a campus alert. The players will be arraigned at 1 o'clock. Federal prosecutors opposing a move by an Iraqi man convicted in a Kentucky terrorism case to gain access to his complete case file. The U.S. attorney filed a motion saying 26-year-old Mohammed Hamadi should not be allowed to have sensitive information in the case. He's considering withdrawing his guilty plea after taking part in a plot to ship thousands of dollars in cash and weapons from Bowling Green to Al-Qaeda in Iraq. A co-defendant pleaded guilty in 2010. Turning now to one of the nation's most closely watched races of this November election. The two main candidates for the U.S. Senate in Kentucky are bringing in potential presidential hopefuls in a final push for voters. U.S. Senator Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts will campaign with Democrat Allison Lundergan Grimes in Louisville tonight. The Grimes bus tour is in western Kentucky this afternoon. They're making stops in Christian, Hopkins, Caldwell, Marshall, and finally Jefferson counties. Hillary Clinton will stump for Grimes on Saturday in Lexington and northern Kentucky. And Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal will appear with incumbent Republican Senator Mitch McConnell in Louisville tomorrow. McConnell's bus tour is rolling through the southwestern part of the state right now with stops in Campbellsville, Glasgow, Bowling Green, Russellville, and Hopkinsville today. We have an update on a UK cheerleader who fell during the first half of the blue white game at Rupp Arena last night. Mercedes Laster is back home today. She fell during a stunt at last night's game. Lester has been fitted with a neck brace. She was taken over to UK hospital, was observed for a while, and then released overnight. The sophomore is is from London, and Kentucky. Well, the wait is finally over. The Cheesecake Factory is now officially open for business in Lexington. A grand opening celebration is held today at its newest location in the newly redesigned Fayette Mall. WKYT's Victor Puente, a very lucky reporter right. today. Drew the good straw today. Yeah, has been there all morning getting his fill of the deliciousness. This line is moving, but there's still a crowd waiting to get inside. They expected a busy day. There's been employees here since 5 this morning. They opened the doors of the Cheesecake Factory just before 11 to begin letting in people who'd been lined up for more than an hour to eat at Lexington's newest restaurant. This is the second location in Kentucky. They've been in Louisville for nine years, but the people who came out this morning said they'd been waiting for the chain to come here. We're super excited for the opening. We've been waiting. For years. Instead of having to drive to Cincinnati or Louisville, this is going to be really nice. The store has flown in trainers from across the country to teach the new employees. They're, of course, best known for the cheesecake. There's a 250 item menu. A lot of these people are excited to sample. Huge menu, big martinis, and good cheesecake. Once we got Trader Joe's in Lexington, I knew Cheesecake Factory couldn't be far away. This location is part of what used to be Sears. A Cheesecake Factory spokesperson told me that when they heard about the renovations happening at the Fayette Mall, they made efforts to make sure that they were one of the businesses filling those vacancies. In Lexington, Victor Puente, WKYT. All right, thanks so much, Victor. Two other restaurants are scheduled to open at the mall. Trevinia Italian Kitchen and Nuke's Eatery will both be joining the Cheesecake Factory.